Welcome back to my so-called disabled life. I am so glad to introduce Kevin Boyer in honor of National Spina Bifida Awareness Month. How are you doing today, Kevin? So far, so good. The weather's not cooperating, but it's Maryland. I mean, every five minutes, it's changing. So it's cold right now. It could be 70 in about an hour. <laughs> the weather changes so drastically like that i had no idea yeah it sure does other than that i'm doing all right it's yes. afternoon yeah. that's good now what is your official diagnosis spina bifida hydrocephalus myelomeningocele and there are a whole bunch of big words and basically what it means is the spina bifida and the Milo meningocele actually caused the hydro, which is a fluid disorder. Okay. Um, and the Milo is prevalent and very much present at birth. The hydro develops, well, with me, it developed in like two days uh, right after birth. So then brain surgery happened. And there's another way to take care of hydro, but it's kind of like when persons that have lymphedema and stuff like that take fluid pills they put you in like fluid depressors it doesn't work and it really it debilitates the individual way more than it should and surgery has done a lot better okay so how many surgeries have you had you spoke about having a brain surgery when you were a baby Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how many surgeries have you had? Well, overall, 102. Oh, wow. Uh, As far as brain surgeries, you have to get it and break it down into like three different categories. The shunt, which is the thing that uh, helps the hydrocephalus and takes that extra fluid off the brain. I've had 44 of those. Wow. My last one was January 15th of 93. Then there's two other conditions that kind of, they're learning that one of them is at birth, which is Chiari type two, and it's a brainstem uh, bone problem. I've had two of those since 2000. I had one in 2000, one in 2004. Then there's also the spinal cord thing, which is tether cord, which is not something it develops over time in your life. And I had my first one in 98, my last one in 2006 with another one in 02. So, you know, brain surgery wise, I've had, if you count them all up, like 48, 49. Yeah. So yours is um, your actual stem. Now, give us an idea of exactly what spina bifida is. Well, it's a disorder that's uh, pronounced nowadays and announced in first late first trimester, ex, uh, the first couple weeks of the second trimester of the opening at the spine. It's an opening that literally, it's just like a hole in the spine um mine was at the base of my spine they can and have seen these openings up in the middle of your back and even all the way up in towards your skull um the ones at the lower spine like mine usually are wheelchair bound there's three percent that walk out of the populace of earth and spina bifida only happens one in every 126 to 127,000 newborns a year worldwide in the united states i think they there's like anywhere from 800 to 3,000 born in the whole united states a year okay um and even with new advances of knowing that you're going to have a baby with spina bifida back in the 70s they didn't have these things they they did not have these things and be even before that it was archaic um, now what things are you talking about that they have well, now? the 3d ultrasound they have and also an enzyme 
test that they can do while you're pregnant. Um, they test amniotic fluid for an enzyme that predicts whether you're having an, uh, a spina bifida baby or not. But that enzyme only shows up, like I said, in the first late the first trimester, or late into that one, early into the second. If they don't catch it, it disappears. Now, let me um, ask you a question about you growing up in your family. Sure. Like, how did your parents help you deal with having spina bifida, considering this is a, a birth defect? Right. Well, mom was single parent. Oh. Father's over that way somewhere. I know where he's at. Whatever. I understand. Um, uh, and she's a spina bifida adult herself. So, <laughs> and we'll get into the how rare that is in a minute. Um but she just kept pushing. She was like, don't sit there and wait for people to do it for you. Not even me. Figure it out. So I was a very self-sufficient baby from literally the time my medical facility met me until literally my last surgery was, which was a bone surgery in 2020. Uh, they're just like you're too independent you don't like asking for help so she didn't also like asking for help she figured it out still does today um that's a very good trait to have yeah it is but then sometimes where she kind of lacked with me or kind of it it overdid it lapped or over side lapped too far one way and didn't even out even when i need help I don't ask for it. It's kind of like, I'll figure it out. No, I'll, I'll figure it out. Even if you uh, see me struggling, just back up. <laughs> so in recent years, I've had to kind of go, well, I'm going to need people to help, but I can get that help and still kind of control how much help kind of thing. Right. Um, now, let me ask you this. What are some of the misconceptions about spina bifida? Well, one, especially with the females, that have spina bifida they're like even in my era and the er, younger ones than me they're like you can't have kids really you shouldn't have kids don't do this don't do that don't the personal life stuff mainly and really uh-huh okay they're still archaic even at one of the best facilities in the world for it for and they did a, a study and they found yeah physically we can Mentally, we can, and we're just dealing with the stigma of the world around us going, you shouldn't, even in medicine. And we're trying to break that. We've been trying to break that, oh, the last seven, eight years. I've spoken at multiple different directions on it as a guy with it to support the women that want to. So, so does this go into some of your advocacy work that you do now? Sure does. Sure now, what does. exactly, what advocacy work are you involved in? Right now? Um, yes. Just making okay. sure, just making sure what they have dubbed us as IDDs, individuals with dual diagnosis or individuals with developmental differences, our new tag instead of disabled. They thought it was kind of vulgar. I was like, look, I'm a disabled dude. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Um, so our new tag, I've been engaging state politicians and things because our cycle, our politician cycles going right now. And the new ones coming in are very adept to listening and then going and showing up at events. That means something to that community in the state I live in. Um, federally... I haven't really done much, but he been hearing rumblings that a bill structured in Maryland will get passed by the vice president's office before the next election in 24 to support to support brain injury survivors of the adult variety. And I was the one that wrote it in 2001, wow. and we enacted that in 03 for adults, and it and it works so they want to take that structure and make it national and that's what i've been hearing 
that the vice president's working on, I haven't confirmed it yet, but I haven't really tried. You know, if That's I want to. That's very impressive. Yeah. So other than that, I just advocate for myself through my medical struggles when I go to the doctor, things of this nature, and they understand. But I have recently had to clean house. <laughs> with medical professionals and get new ones that understand better and I don't have to struggle to explain as much as I would with these ones I'm getting rid of or replacing so it is very interesting when you have more of a specialist who oh, yeah. specializes in exactly what you have it, they're so hard to find mm -hmm. but once you do your communication will change dramatically. I right. do want to thank you for coming on to our show and telling okay. us about your experience. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it, Kevin. Thank you okay. so much. Could we count on you to be on one of our future shows? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do whatever subjects keep in touch with me. You know where to find me um, about whatever facet of anything and if i figure out something that you may want to do that you know i'm into or something i'll hit you up kevin boyer is a living advocate and helpmate i will say that he is an expert because from experience and then as actually from learning and i only can admire that thank you so much kevin have thank a you. great day you too thanks so much